But the point of the Christ is coming, why people will say, why do I need to hear about the people of the book? I'm a Muslim. Allah Azza wa Jalla, that same surah is not complete without this ayah. The Prophet, he said, La salata lima la yaqa bi fatihati kitab. There is no complete prayer for the one who does not read Surah Fatiha. And the last part of Surah Fatiha, we ask Allah, وَإِذُ الْمَقْضُوبِ عَلِيهِ وَرَبُّوَانِ O Allah, don't make us among those who have earned your wrath. And do not make us among those who have gone straight. And of all those uh, you know, traits are described as the Prophet of Allah are so said, those who Allah's wrath was upon us, they moved by because they had knowledge, but they did not act upon it. And the Christians, those who went astray because they invented lies, things that their prophets did not come with. They were deluded and deceived in their religion for that of the lies they used to invent. So now, as we now hold so Fatiha very dearly to our heart, as it is the greatest surah in the Quran, and as the Prophet said, if nothing was revealed like it, whether it was in the Torah or the Injil or the Zabur, or even in the Quran, there's no soul like it. So, coming full circle is that no matter what era we may be in, Allah told us in the, in the Quran, and it is in His pre eternal knowledge, but it was revealed about 15 centuries ago. The Jews and the Christians will never be pleased with you until you follow their religion. And Allah will never be pleased with you until you follow their religion. Say, O Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the guidance is Allah's guidance. The real guidance is Allah's guidance. That today we live in an era I don't even know. I mean, when I was a college student, yeah, we heard classes of philosophy, but not things that are being pushed up, such as postmodernism. That there's no such thing as a subjective truth, right? Anybody can have an objective truth. But Allah Azza wa Jalla, He told us who defines the truth in Surah to Yunus. But any, can any of your partners, Allah told Prophet Muhammad to ask the Mushrikun of Mecca, can any of your partners guide to the truth? Say what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah who guides to the truth. So truth is not something that a human being who lives today may think of it and then he goes away and then somebody comes 50 years from now and he defines truth. Allah Azza wa Jalla defines what is the truth. Okay. So now, first of all, I'll read the words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's reported by Imam al-Bukhari in Sahih that from the companion Abu Sa'id al Khudri, رضي الله عنه. Most first is from the companion. Uh, it's from the companion. I believe Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "لا تقوم ساعة حتى تأخذ أمتي بأخر القرون قبلها شبرا بشبر وذراعا بذراع." فَقِيلَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ كَفَارِسْ وَرُمْ فَقَالَ وَمَنِ النَّاسُ إِلَّا أُولَئِكَ The hadith of Rabbi said that the hour, the day of judgment will not come until my ummah, so not all of us fit in this, because we're the ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that until my ummah takes the horns, like a metaphor, of those before them, a handsman for a handsman, and a yard for a yard, and then there was asked the Messenger of Allah, are you referring to the Persians and the Romans? So the Prophet said, then who else would be referred to except those? And the next narration, I mean, the Hajj will mention some words in Fatih al Dari. The Prophet, report, uh, Sallallahu so Alaihi Wasallam, so reported from Abu Sayyid al Khudri, he said, That it tell you, I'm not a man, 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 I'm not that the Prophet Sallallahu he said that surely you will follow the traditions of those before you, hands fan for hands fan, and a yard for a yard, until if one of them had entered a lizard hole, you would have followed them. So this, he said, O Messenger of Allah, are you referring to the Jews and the Christians? He said, who else would I be referring to? It's, it's an answer of itself. So Ibn Hajar Rahimahullah, he mentioned some words that, um, when it comes to the Persians and the Romans, that he said, "A Farisi Rum li kulihim kano ida dak akibar manukil ab wa kfarum wa ayyatan wa usarum bila." He referred to the Jews and the Christians in that time, because I'm not Jews, sorry, this is the Persians and the Romans, because they were the greatest of, you can say, uh, 
Uh, they were the greatest of, um, what's it called, empires at that time. Uh, and they had the most subjects under their rule. And they, control, they uh, governed the most wise of lands. And then as for, uh, when it comes to talking of the hands man for hands man, that he said, the entering the lizard hole, he said that, but that he quotes, uh, I believe this. He said, What to hold the jury, Tantino, if the daddy didn't feel cool, he shaped the new man, and I shall run with them. That the metaphor of following them in the lizard hole is an example of following them in everything that the Sharia has forbade and has made something blameworthy and reprehensible. And then he saw Allah Arsalam, when he was asked about the Jews and the Christians, when he said, who else would he would refer to? He said, is istifhamu inkari, istifhamu That is a rhetorical answer. That when you say that, when you sometimes ask a question, you're trying to show that in it implies what the answer is. So anyway, as for some of the ayats, now I'm not here to give tafsir or to do tafsir with the ayats. Some of this is directly from the Asbab al-Nusul in the context of the verses. Some of them is just the Mujawab al-Ma'na al But however, whoever does good as the Prophet said, Man wajada khayran fa la'ihmadillah wa man wajada ghayra dhalik fa la'ayalu manna illa nafsa That whoever does good, he should praise Allah. Whoever finds good, whoever, uh, whoever praises Allah, excuse me, whoever finds good, he should praise Allah Azza wa Jalla. Alhamdulillah. If this is not in us, Alhamdulillah, we thank God. وَمَنْ وَجَدَ لَا يَلَا لِكْ فَلَا يَلُمْ مِنَّا إِلَا نَفْسَ Whoever finds wrong or, or blameworthy, um, you know, whoever finds something that is, whoever finds something that is wrong or evil, then he should blame only himself. The Prophet, Allah told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَا أَصَابَ فِي مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنْ اللَّهِ Whatever has come to you of good is from Allah. وَمَا أَصَابَ فِي مِنْ سِيَّةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِ Whatever comes to you of evil or wrong, then that it has come from you, from your self. So, Alhamdulillah. However, all the believers should always see that I have something that I can improve in. The believer is not one who feels complacent and says that Alhamdulillah, I have a, mashallah, permanent home in Jannah made. But as long as you're living, فَإِنَّ الْحَيْءٍ لَا تُمَنْ عَلَيْهِ فِتْنَةٍ The one who's living, he is never safe from tribulation. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he told the great Sahabi Mu'ad ibn Jabal when he was sending him to Yemen. And he said, Ya Mu'ad, iya'ka wa tatana'u fa'in a'ibad Allah ilayhi wa dhumma tatana'u That one interpreted that, Oh Mu'ad, beware of being complacent because the true service of Allah, they are never complacent. Okay. So, one, one word to start is, Allah Azza wa Jalla himself said in the Quran, that Ya Ibn Ladina Amu, in Tutir'u, Tariqun Mina Ladina Utu Al Kitab, that Utu Al Kumba'ta Imani Kum Kafi, that all you who believe, if you were to follow a group of the people of the book, they would indeed turn you back on your heels as disbelievers. So the incident of revelation, according to Hitra Rahimullah, the Surah Ibn Abbas, he said, that what happened after the Ozan al Khazraj, they became Muslim and they made peace. Because they used to fight for generations. They made peace. One of the Jews of Medina at that time, he started to say the poetry in Arabic that used to incite tension and wars between Al Ozan and Al Khazraj. So they were about to fight again. And then Allah revealed this ayah. And how, submiss- how much they submitted to Allah and His Messenger, it was just enough to hear the words of Allah that they became brothers and they hugged each other, and they they never fought against each other. Today we know the Ummah has Allah knows even better of how much disunity there is. But we have to understand that Allah Azza wa Jalla, He told us to unite according to, according to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger. Of course, there will be shaitan al the jinn. There is some shaitan from the jinn, some shaitan from the human beings. They will try to get us to divide and when you divide, it's easy to conquer. So Allah like told them, "Okay, for tafuruna, want to, okay, for tafuruna, bilad, okay, for tafuruna, want to tutra alikum ayatullahi 
of Ibn Rasul. How can you disbelieve? He was addressing those companions that are going to fight. That how can you disbelieve? And the words of Allah, the ayat of Allah, are recited upon you, and His messenger is amongst you. Whoever holds firm to Allah Azza wa Jal, then he has been guided to the straight path. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he also mentioned in another part of Surah Ta'ali Ibrahim, Ya ibn al-Din Hamu, in Tulti'u al-Din al-Kifar, we will do kum ala aqabi kum fatan qaribu khasiri. Or you will believe if you obey the disbelievers, they will surely turn you back on your heels and then you will become losers. Another thing that is prevalent, is that Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 123, "Bi sabi amanihi kum, wala kitab, man yamal suwa an yuzabi, wala jidhu min dun yulahi, wali wa nasiyah." That this ayah when it was revealed, we'll come back to it. That the Christian, the Jews said, "Whatever happens, we're gonna go to Jannah." The Christians said, "Whatever happens, we're gonna go to Jannah." That's Allah Azza wa Jalla. He told. First, he addressed the Sahai and Muslim. He said, It is not as your wishes desire. Nor are the people of the book. Allah he said, This phrase, according to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, was one of the most knowledgeable Sahaba of the Quran. That he was asked by Umar, Are you ayat in fi kitab al What is the scariest ayah in the Quran? He mentioned this part, Man ya'amna su'a yuzabi. Whoever does evil, Allah made it unrestricted, nakila. Whoever does evil, he will be recompensed with that. He will not find any help for him, nor uh, protector besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So general respect to brothers and sisters, of course we know that it requires Iman. You have to have Iman in the arkan of Iman, of course, Billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger, and all those things that he وسلم, told us, and his Sahaba took, and were transmitted to the generations, as parts of, of our Iman. However, as they say, actions speak louder than words. If you look in the Quran, when Allah promises Jannah for people, but to the Jannah to the or if to Allah, you might come to the time of That is the garden of Jannah you have been you are near because of the actions you used to do. So, Alhamdulillah, we're Muslim today, we do actions and good actions and deeds, but we should not take complacency. This is just for Muslim. But if we want to I that I'm not even making, you know, uh, what's it called, ta'weel, but it's just, يعني, تدبر and تأمل. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said of Bani Israel in the beginning of Surah Baqarah, وَقُلْنَا تَخُلُّ هَذِهِ الْقَرِيَةَ وَيَذْكُلْنَا تَخُلُّ هَذِهِ الْقَرِيَةَ فَقُلُّ مِنْهَا حَيْبُ شِئْسِ الرَّوَضَ وَمَثْفُرُ لِلَّهِ سُجَدَ وَقُلُّ حِطَّةً That after Bani Israel was saved from Fir'aun, Allah told him, enter, according to some of the Mufassirun, uh, of the Tabi'un, they said, Ay Bayt al enter the, the sacred land. But they had to lower themselves in a position of, of sujood or rukur. And Allah told them, say, wa Say this word, seeking forgiveness from Allah, ma'fira. But out of their arrogance, they changed the word into hinta, which is like a red, you know, uh, grain. So today, Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, may Allah guide one know, I'm not here to do naqt or ta'yeeb. But out of caring for my fellow Muslim women, especially my generation and younger, that these terms that are used, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not sin. In We don't find in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. We did not hear this in the early generation. That you have to be aware of language. Language shapes your mind. So a lot of us see in propaganda whether it's the Muslim woman or what's happening يعني, in Gaza and Palestine, may Allah give them peace and victory and honor. I mean, but those in charge of the media, they manipulate words. Why? Because they know it has an impact. So what I'm trying to get back to is, Shaitan is the biggest one who tries to manipulate the media. And when you use terms, for example, Allah told us in the Quran that, uh, that Allah has told us our forefather, Mirza Tabiq Ibrahim, he is your forefather Ibrahim, who is a Muslim. This is his, the religion, the path 
the tradition he taught us, he's the one who taught, called his example, uh, Ali is an example of every Muslim. That wa man yarqab amilati Ibrahim illa man safiha nafsa. Allah said, whoever seeks other than the way of Ibrahim, he has deluded, he has fooled himself. So anyway, Ibrahim was called Hanif al Muslim. A Muslim, he doesn't turn right or left. He is focused on one path, one way. But today, these terms, progressive Muslim, or liberal Muslim, or using Marib as a Muslim, but this is not actually what it implies. These things now, although it's not an excuse, but it is setting a precedent that the person now, they can now pick and choose what is of, of, what is obliged upon them and what they have to do. So we all have, yani, to understand that the only reason we are here is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's worship and when we leave this world we will never come back. I don't have a lot of time, uh, I wanted to cover many things, but this is, this is I think one of the most essential things, not because it's my words, but to understand that if a person doesn't really take their uh, يعني, understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting them on this earth, then as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said in the Ma'adrak al Nasim in Kalam al Huwa Tibula, Ida la tastahi fasma'ana shaykh. When the person has no shame, they'll do whatever they want. So many people, and I'm not here to tell somebody these are their words without me hearing them, but it is very pervasive. Many, many of you have heard this. That when it comes to the statement of we have to be balanced between deen and dunya. We have to be balanced between deen and dunya. Even some people will use the ayah of Surah Al-Qasas, ayah 77, the story of Qarun, without the meaning of what the Sahaba or the Tabi'un understood. And nobody understands Quran like that. As the ayah, Qarun was told, what tell you, fi ma'atak Allahu ad-dawul akhirah. Many people, they will use this verse. Don't forget your portion of the dunya. But how do they understand it? It comes in the tafsir of Imam Ibn Jarir, rahimahullah, that he quoted another than Abba ibn Abbas. He said, Don't leave out the fact that you do actions for Allah in this world. His two, his, uh, some of his other students, such as, some of his students, such as, Mujahid. He said, To do the obedience of Allah, that's what you should not forget of your, of your portion in this world. Others said, what I think, uh, Others said that, This is what Mujahid said. You do in this world actions for your Akhirah. There is no other reason in this world. That does not mean, not give, uh, that doesn't mean give up your livelihood and responsibilities. But the thing is, if we know the matter of fact, majority of us, and I'm not free of it, our majority of our time is for outside of dedication to Allah. And even if we're doing halal Muhammad, that's the blessing from Allah. But in reality, all of our jobs, all of our schooling, every moment in our life, it requires it. Right? There is a hukum of Allah in that. What we give of time is not just Alhamdulillah, the, the foundations of our religion. This is a blessing if we know that. But in every moment of my life, I have to submit to the, the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we go back to the scholars. So this has become another way to pacify ourselves. That I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. And I'll just say, you have to be balanced between doing the deen and doing it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a standard for us. If I'm not meeting that standard, I ask Allah for forgiveness. We do our best to keep going when we seek forgiveness. But we do not now give ourselves basically a free party. We ask Allah for forgiveness. Okay, with a little bit of time I have, I have to, I'm just going to pick up a few things that uh, inshallah will finish. So, the summary of of what I wanted to put in one category is some of the descriptions of the people of the book when it became with knowledge and some of it has to do with their relationship with al akhirah So because the one of knowledge will take more time, I'll do that first and finish with that. So one example is that Allah Azza wa Jalla told the people of the book, Ya Yahudina Amun, or not the people of the book, 
There's another example, and this is for all of us. Alhamdulillah, a lot of our time in the masjid, we hear about ibadat, the worship between us and Allah. But also the rights of the creation is a big part of our deen. And I'm not preaching this saying that I'm perfect at it. But in Mu'amala we find, as Allah SWT mentioned, وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مِنْ إِنْ تَأْمَنُهُ بِالْقِنْطَارِ يُعْدِهِ إِلَيْكَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ إِنْ تَأْمَنُهُ بِالْدِنَارِ لَا يُعْدِهِ إِلَيْكَ إِلَّا مَا دُنْتَ عَلَيْهِ خَوَى إِمَانًا That an example of what is happening here that, that Allah said you will find from the people of the book some of them, if you give them a trust of a mountain's weight of wealth, they will return it to you. But some of them, if you gave them a dinar, one gold coin, you will not give it back, as Abdul Mujahid said, a muadhila, unless you consistently go back and back and back and back, you will not get it back from them. Sometimes we take things laxly. May Allah save it from here, but there's a big issue sometimes with repaying loans, repaying debts between Muslims. That the, the one who takes the loan and he has the need to pay it back, the Prophet said, in Allah, he the Allah, Allah's help is with the one who took the debt to repay the loan if his niya is there. But he also said that, مَطْرُ الْغَنِيِّ The one who has the money to pay back the creditor, but he delays it, this is oppression, this is wrong injustice. And sometimes it breaks the brotherhood, the family even, the community, because these are the rights of people. So Allah he said, some of the people of the book, they'll return it if it's a big amount. Some of them, if it's a little amount, they will not return it unless you go back to them consistently. So that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said that يُغْفَرُ لِلشَّهِيدِ كُلُّ ذَنْبٍ إِلَى الدَّيْنِ The martyr, all his sin is forgiven from the first drop. But he said, except the debt. Why? Because that debt goes to the credit. Allah will establish one of our mawazin al qisla al yawm al qiyam But however, those who have wealth, and then they can, you know, give respite. Allah he said, when Kana Abu Usratin, Fanadi Batun Yami Sawa. If the person went through a difficult time, then give him respite for some time. One to say, Yaku, Khaylu Lakum in Kuntum Ta'alam. And if you were to forgive that debt and say it's charity, I don't like the principle, that's better for you if you know. Some of the hadith say, the one, if you give your debtor a, a respite every day extra after the day was set for the loan, every day you give him respite. You get that credit as if you gave that money sadaqa. But that doesn't mean the creditor should take you lightly. So that was just one thing. And then, to conclude with, is the relationship with the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I'm sorry if people are hungry. Um, inshallah, we'll finish after this for the meal. Lakin, ta'ala ruh, we need the food of the soul. And the, and the food of the body, inshallah. Imam Ahmed bin Hamd rahimullah he said that you are more in need of knowledge than you need food and water. If you have one meal a day, you will survive. But knowledge you need for every decision in your life. And I'm not even saying I'm the one to give that or teach that, but it's just to show the powers and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala words most for you. So now, this is the one ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned in Surah to Araf. فخلف من بعدهم خلف ورثوا الكتاب يأخذون عرض هذا الأدنى ويقولون سيغفر لنا وأن يأتيهم عرض مثله يأخذوه المكتب عليه ميثاق الكتاب ألا يقول على الله إلا الحق ودرسوا ما فيه والدار الآخرة خير للذين والدار الآخرة خير للذين يتقون أفلا تعقلون so this is from the Tafsir of Imam Al-Qurtub Rahmullah. He says that Allah is referring, or is, is speak, he says, Qal Mufassirun, this refers to Al-Yahud. وَرِثُوا كِتَابُ اللَّهِ فَقَرَأُوهُ وَعَلِمُوهُ Excuse me, فَقَرَأُوهُ وَعَلِمُوهُ That they read the book of Allah, they inherited it, you know, from generation to generation. That فَقَرَأُوهُ they read it وَعَلِمُوهُ And they knew it. But they opposed its rule. They did the opposite. And they did what that book said was prohibited while studying that book. That this was a reproachment from Allah about this. As much as Surah al if you know from the ninth verse, is mostly the story of Musa and Bani Israel. 
فمن يسالكم اخبار عنهم انهم ياخذون ما يعرض لهم من متاع الدنيا لشده حرصهم ونهمهم. That they used to take the uh, tools and the property and possessions of this dunya with their intense greed for it. وَيَقُولُونَ سَيُغْفَرُ لَنَا And they used to say, we're going to be forgiven. We're going to be forgiven. وَهُمْ لَا يَتُوبُونَ But the thing was, they did not make repentance. They did not make repentance. This is an example. Like when a person, I like you for I don't know as Muslim as you are, but substance abuse and addiction is, is prevalent. It happens. We have people. But anyway, the human being, when they have an addiction, that they, the more they use that drug, the more tolerance they will get to it. When we disobey Allah, then to get that pleasure we used to get from the sin, shaitan will increase your desire to do that sin and that sin and that sin, to get that vibe or to get that feeling. And then while you're doing that, just as that addict is so hard for them to give up their addiction, what happens? It's harder to make tawbah. Your heart gets harder and harder. That's why Allah said to Nisa'i, ثُمَّ قَسَدْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِي فَهِيَ كَلَ فِجَّارَةِ أَوَا شَدْ الْقَسْرُ The famous verse, Allah, He said, the hearts of Nisa'i is like, He says, some of you is like, like a rock or harder than a rock. So anyway, He said, they said they would be forgiven, but they would not make tawbah. And then He said, وَدَيْعَ عَلَانَهُمْ لَا يَتُوبُونَ قَوْلَهُ تَعَالَى وَهِنْ يَأْتِهِمْ عَوَقُ مِثْلُهُ يَأْخُذُ The proof that said they didn't make tawbah, Allah, He said that, if Mata' al-Dunya, as what al Quran said, comes to them, a, a possession of this world comes to them, He said, الدَّرَاهِمْ وَالْتَنَارِينَ Of gold and silver, and then He says, وَأَنَّهُمْ وَأَنَّهُمْ بِحَالِكْ إِنْ أَمْكَنَ He says, وَأَنَّهُمْ بِحَالِكْ إِنْ أَمْكَنَ وَأَنَّهُمْ بِحَالِكْ إِنْ أَمْكَنَ ثَانِيَةً ارْتَكَبُوهَا After they got the wealth through a prohibited means, and they were saying we would get forgiven. Instead of making Toba the first time, he said that in history, if they got a second chance to make the money in the illegal way, they would take it the second time. He said that they were, uh, they, they instead chose to be deceived that they would be forgiven while they were persisting in the sin. That the one who says they will be forgiven, they hope, first is they stop doing the sin. It's like an example, in a human court, if somebody is in front of a judge in a criminal court and that judge gave them pardon the first time, do you think they're going to go back and do that crime again? Do you think they're going to give up easy the second time? So Allah is the most just, He's the most fair. He is merciful, but He is also just. So the one who works for forgiveness first, He stops from the sin. As I believe it's a full of prayer, He said, a tawbah to be the lady the qadaq, tawbah to be kaabi. The one who makes repentance without stopping from the sin, he's the, this is the tawbah of the life. And then he said the one who also has remorse from that. So kind of full circle to the book, I'm sorry for that long part. But there's a beautiful author here of Mu'ad al Mujabah, is also in the tafsir of Imam al Qurtani in this verse. He said, Sayyidullah al Quran of Yisuduri Akwani, can I have the thobu for you to have friends? That the Quran, it will become, you know, like like a, uh, a fabric fades and gets old, it will get like that in the hearts of the people. And like the metaphor as if the leaves of a tree, the way the leaves fall off, similarly the book of Allah like that, they read the Quran, but they have no pleasure and joy and sweetness of it. Now if a person is reading the Quran and they don't feel that, they should not say, okay, I'm not going to read. No, alhamdulillah, persist. But there's levels to it. He said, يَلْبَسُونَ جُرُوبُ الْضَعِمْ عَلَىٰ قُرُوبِ فِيَا These people, as a metaphor, they wear the skins of, like, uh, you know, sheep skin, wool. However, underneath they have the hearts of wolves. أَعْمَالُهُمْ طُمَعُمْ لَا يُخَالِنُ الْخَوْفِ Their actions are covetedness and greed, but it doesn't have fear of Allah in them. In Qasaru, Qalu, Sanabu. Wa in Asaru, Qalu, Sanifalana. If they're found short of doing that 
action that Allah commanded, then they will they will say we will reach inshallah. But if they do evil, they will say we will be forgiven. Inna la mushrikum billahi shayya. Then Muhammad said, we don't seek a, pro- a, a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one thing from, uh, I believe it's in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayla, rahimahullah ta'ala, that one of the companions, one of the companions, uh, he said, فَكَرَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى وَسَلَمْ شَيْنًا فَقَالَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentioned something, he said, that you in the awani, the have the ready. The time we're living in, alhamdulillah, we have so much technology to get access for good. Although a lot of that is used for evil. But don't be deceived because of the plethora of recordings or PDFs. Because the real treasure of knowledge is the scholars. The real treasure of knowledge is the scholars. And how much we need them in this time, in this land, in this era, Allah knows. So anyway, the Prophet said, a time will come when knowledge will disappear. But to Ya Rasulullah, وَكَيْفَ يَذْهَبُ الْعِلْمِ وَنَحْنُ نَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ وَنُقْرِئُهُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَنُقْرِئُهُ أَبْنَاءَ وَنُقْرِئُهُ أَبْنَاءُنَا أَبْنَاءَهُمْ إِلَى يَوْمُ الْقِيَامِ This companion, he was in the Prophet's life. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He witnessed his life. He said, Prophet Allah, how can the knowledge disappear? When we read the Qur'an, and we read the Qur'an to our children, and our children will read the Qur'an to our grandchildren, and then, until the day of judgment. So what did the Bible say? He said, Qala fayyilatika umuka ziyad. He said, may your mother bereave you. He said, as I come, the Sahabah's name is Ziyad, you know? Lameen. May your mother bereave you as the Arabic phrase. He said, in kunta, a'in kuntu la arakim afqai rajmu bil madin. He said, Ziyad, I thought you were one of the most intelligent and understanding people men of Medina. He said, awa laysa hadhi li yahud wa masara li khanawana tawallahu wa injil la ya'amaluna bi shayi mimma fihima. He said, don't the Jews and the Christians read the Torah and the Gospel, but they don't act on what is saying. They don't act on what is saying. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit as well as we said. Anything as we said is good, it's from Allah alone. And anything that's said wrong is from me and Shaitan. And Allah and His message are free from them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve the man in our hearts, in the hearts of our children, and the progeny until the come. Allah and His message are free from them. ونبع يقينا ليس بعده شيء اللهم إنا نسألك إيمان يباشي قلوبنا حتى لا حتى اللهم إنا نسألك إيمان يباشي قلوبنا حتى نعلم أنه لا يصيبنا إلا ما كتبت إلا ما كتبت لنا ورضا من المعيشة بما قسمت قسمت لنا اللهم اجعل الحالش جمع جمع الحمى وتبركنا من بعده تبركنا من عصومة ولا تجعل فينا ولا بيننا ولا منا شقي مديد ولا محرومة اللهم هذا حالنا لخفر عليك وهذا هو رحمة الله من بين يديك أمرتنا فارتكب أمرتنا أمرتنا فارتكبنا ونهيت أمرتنا فنهينا ونهيتنا فارتكبنا ولم يسرنا إلا عفوك يا أكرم الأكرمين يا عزيز في ملكه ويحكم في سمعه اهدنا الصلاة والسلام وأخرجنا من الظلمات إلى النور وجنبنا الفتن والفواحش ما الله منا وما الوطن اللهم أمرتنا فتركنا فاغفر لنا يا ربنا ووفقنا لما تحب وترضى من الخلق في عبد عمي ومية الهدى إنك على كل شيء قدير سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصيرون والسلام على نصير الحمد لله بعد جزاك الله خير uh, questions? the only possible opinion. That is the amount of knowledge, no matter what the brother who asks. 
So, number one, Allah guess he said in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that in the time of the Prophet, and even before, the people, majority of people who claim to be Muslim or calling the way of Isa, they had that shit, that is known. Now, for the ayah, so to so many, there is a famous ayah, Aliyah Muhammad Lakum, Tayyib Rats, Mutaram Lakum, 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 إذا أتيت المؤمن رضي الله عنه محسنين غير المسافحين ولا متخذ بأخدان ومن يفر بالإيمان وما يكفر بالإيمان فهو الحب تعمله وهو إلى أخلاة المغاسين So this ayah Allah he said the food of the people of the book is lawful for you and your food is lawful for them أقول لك عبد الله بن عباس he mentioned أي بالحوم لمي So that's what we establish Okay Now the second is Allah he mentioned in tawseel for example, Surah Al-An'an, what is considered a lawful animal to eat as a Muslim, first of all? Right? So Allah is mentioning uh, that uh, Eat from what the name of Allah has been recited on, if you are in fact believers in, in His signs. And then Allah said, وَمَا لَكُمَ لَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكِرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَالْفَصَلُ لَكُمَ حَرَمْ عَلَيْهِ Why do you not eat from the food that the name of Allah has been mentioned upon and He has mentioned in detail what He has made lawful for you? وَالْفَصَلُ لَكُمْ Sorry, He made, He mentioned in detail what He has made prohibited for you. And then the last, in this subject, Allah He said, وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يَذْكُرُ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسَ do not eat from me or food, the name of Allah was not recited, and that is fist. So this is one rule as a Muslim. Okay. Now, in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned rules. He said, Any animal that was slaughtered for us, if we eat beef, cow, some meat, you know, goat, sheep, whatever it may be, some camel, the an'am, that he said, whatever you use a sharp tool that makes the blood flow, then eat, and the name of Allah was mentioned, then eat from it. So now, as a Muslim, no matter if it's Christian, Jew, no matter what country, the only thing that's considered the biha, the biha, first and foremost, how that animal died, is if either the esophagus, the trachea, and the two jugular veins. Some fuqaha said you have to do two of the four, some said three of the four. That when it's cut and the blood flows, that is what is known as Dabahimisa. So no matter how high technology goes, if they want to electrocute it, if they want to drown it, if they want to do this and that to it, Allah made a rule for the biha that that's how it is. And we know through science, Alhamdulillah, this is much beneficial for us. One scholar did research, if you do this to a cow and you do that, 28 pounds of blood will leave that animal. But if you do another cut, which is commonly the vertical cut, only 8 pounds of blood will leave that animal. And when you cut the jugular vein, the oxygen is cut off to the brain, the animal feels no pain. So this is first of all the physical way. I'm not even going to give an answer for the, the best mother first. That's one. So now if the non-Muslims, if they're Jew, Christian, and they don't do it that way, it, it, we don't have a, an exemption from that. We don't have an exemption from that. Two is the best one. Now, three of the four fuqaha, I'm coming, inshallah, is Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, and Imam Ahmed. They regarded the best one as wajib, to say the Bismillah. So if it's a Muslim, he says the Bismillah. If it's a Christian or a Jew, that for them, even though Allah he said they make disbelief, if they say in the name of my Lord is accepted. But they can't say, for example, for Saint Paul or for Saint Mary or for this or that. Because that is Allah prohibited any animal that's sacrificed for other than him, if they mention it. So now they require that. Now what is a lot of people say Basman is not needed? I'm just gonna say the history. A Shaykh of the four Imams. He held that the best mala is sunnah, it's not wajib. And why? Because he deduced from a hadith which is actually mursal, so it's from Sa'id ibn Musayyib, 
and then go through the, the name of the companion to the Prophet. And those who study the principles of fiqh or hadith, Sayyid al Musayyib, he accepts all of his mawasil because he was Imam al Tabi'an. They said he will not lie from the Prophet, although he never met him. That hadith says the Muslim slaughters in the name of Allah, whether he says the name or he doesn't. So he took that Musa hadith, right? And then in the ayah of those who study the language, if you want to know the wow, he said this is wow hadith in the Arabic grammar. This wow is related to the ayah As long as that person didn't dedicate that animal to other than Allah, then it's not prohibited. That's just a shaykh's opinion. But overall, the evidence shows the best man is wajh, right? So that to conclude, the, many people will claim the incident that the Prophet said he was with Aisha, the Hadith of Bukhari, and she said, Oh Prophet of Allah, some new Muslims, so some companions, they became Muslim and they gave me as a gift to us. But I don't know if they said the Bismillah or not. So the Prophet, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you say the name of Allah. So scholars like Ibn Hajj say, it's a Muslim. If a Muslim gives you meat, beyond reasonable doubt, we take from the Muslim. We don't go around and have ta'an and doubt and think this person. If you don't have proof, I can't say, oh, this brother, I don't think he would bring me halali, right? So that's the context. Now I'm going to put this on one side. Because I know the question, but one thing is to know the condition of where we live in. I have to know myself. I have very close eyewitness friends. They've gone to many slaughterhouses and the majority of chicken, for example, it goes on a conveyor belt, right? And that chicken, some have seen as eyewitness, that that chicken, before it goes to the knife or the blade, it flaps its wings. And that blade will cut its, its for example, its wing. Now that chicken, when it gets cut in its wing, and it didn't get cut in its neck, and then that chicken will go, they put it in hot water, and then the feathers come up. That's not that in Islam. So that's the giving. And I'm not even going to talk about the scholars. Many scholars do give a foot fatwa for machine slaughter. For a cow, instead of a horizontal cut in America, it's known as a vertical cut, which is just the trait of the esophagus, where the food goes. Some get electrocuted first, and they, some get killed from that stuff, and then they get it. So, Alhamdulillah, in California, in the Northern California, traveling, I've been in many states in America, we have more access to confirm, like we don't have to do the work for us. Some, I want to mention, uh, so, you know, what's it called, endorsing this organization that, but it's widely accepted that these farms, these sources, alhamdulillah, had slaughtered food, with the bismillah is good. Now shaitan will come to you. Unfortunately, we live in a very comfortable life. Sometimes we think it's wise if I have to have meat every meal. I can't live without meat. So if I want this, bismillah. Or Shaitan will say, oh, this one is less dollars than that one. So, but I'm saying at the end of the day, if we want our dua and our ibadah accepted, the Prophet he said that, The Sa'id ibn al-Waqas, he asked the Prophet Oh, the Prophet asked Allah, so the Prophet asked Allah, O Prophet, that I make, that all my dua is accepted. So the Prophet said, make your food pure how you earn the food money, and the food that you buy and you eat, make it pure, your dua is accepted. So he said, is this special for me? He said, no, it's for the Ummah altogether. So this is one thing. So that, the two things I wanted to answer in detail because there's a lot of factors in this answer. The ayat are there, and they don't contradict each other, but they cannot go and say this animal is for St. Paul, or St. Peter, or St. Luke, or then it becomes slaughtered by the animal. And that was this. First of all, Jazakallah khair, I'm good to see you here back in the day. So, it has been since two, ten years almost? Yeah, 2013. Yes, what do you say for the youth since what, what's your reward? Uh, uh, the voice is a little low. The what, voice, what's, your, what, what's your advice for the youth? Since you left Davis and it has been ten years now? Well, I'm not one to give advice. I'm the one who's looking for advice. But, you know, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, from the rights of the Muslim, is that uh, as the Prophet ﷺ said, 
as youth, is always try to think long term. Think long term. Enjoy your youth, but remember it will not stay forever. And that you prioritize that which brings you closer to Allah. Well, number one, you have friends that remind you of Allah. And if they tell you to disobey Allah, don't feel ashamed or don't feel ridiculed because they make fun of you. That when I was going in high school, for example, I'm just giving an example, I'm not saying I'm dead, but it was around the time of September 11th. So a lot of Muslims, they were ashamed to be called a Muslim. They were ashamed to have a Muslim name. Ashamed to dress like a Muslim. Even to pray. We, alhamdulillah, we had a principal in our public high school. She would designate her office when we have Salat al Asr in campus. She would leave her office and say, pray in my office. Allah made that happen. But if you ask them to pray because the man is weak, they will make an excuse. So what I'm saying is now if you ask any of them, they regret that time in their life. They won't say, I'm glad I missed Salah because I played games or I, you know, for example, went to dances, the prom, I had fun, I did video games, or these things. They will say that what? I, I regret that I didn't establish this time in my life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'm like, you guys have everything you have to do in this masjid. You have Shaykh Ahmad, you have many teachers. You have, mashallah, a great opportunity. But the thing is, you gotta be, uh, you gotta be dedicated and committed. The same way we wanna be, the, for example, the top athlete. Many of us love sports, there's nothing wrong with that. The sisters, I'm sure they have other things as well. But we, we don't wanna be settled for second place. We don't wanna be on the bench. We don't wanna miss the team. We want to be the top person there, right? But however, the deen of Allah SWT also needs dedication and commitment. And it will not come easy. It takes dedication, commitment, sacrifice. So you have an ambition, a strong determination to stay around people that help you get there. Stay around people who help you get there and be aware of going in bad directions. And Allah knows best. So I don't think there's one more question. I'm sorry for taking too long. Inshallah, it's time for dinner. So I'm going to have a mission of the United States. So I'm going to have a mission of the United States.